they found improvements in SIBO, improvements in IBS, improvements in abdominal pain and diarrhea, likely due to the fact that Saccharomyces is antibacterial. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. Let's discuss a very exciting study that found the addition of Saccharomyces boulardii probiotic to dietary changes can be superior to dietary changes alone in improving SIBO, IBS, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. So we'll break down the study, the study protocol, give you the protocol so you can try it at home and also help you understand what is Saccharomyces boulardii and why it can be helpful. Starting off, defining SIBO. You've likely heard of SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, but why SIBO can be so problematic is because the small intestine is where 90 plus percent of calories and nutrients are absorbed. And not only that, this is where you have the highest density of immune cells in your entire body. So if you have SIBO and the resulting hyperpermeability that can occur when SIBO is present, you can start excessively triggering the immune system that's on the other side of the intestinal lumen leading to chronic inflammation. And this is why we see SIBO correlate not only with the obvious digestive symptoms, IBS, abdominal distension, bloating, pain, diarrhea, constipation, but also extra intestinal manifestations like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, because remember that the gut drains to the liver, there's also this old saying in naturopathic medicine that the skin is a reflection of the gut. And this is because one of the ways in which you detox outside of the liver is also through sweat. And so as things are making their way out, you may see impacts on skin or perhaps even body odor. Additionally, there are studies documenting SIBO correlating with things like depression or even restless leg. And not only that, but perhaps even metabolic consequences or even malabsorption of thyroid hormone medication and thus instability in your thyroid hormone levels. So SIBO very important because the small intestine, again, is where so much crucial function happens for your body. Now, Saccharomyces boulardii is also quite interesting. It was discovered by Henry Boulard going way back to the 1920s. He was traveling in Indochina looking for a new type of yeast in the fermentation process to make wine. Simultaneously, there was a cholera outbreak. And Boulard very astutely observed that those who were drinking a certain tea did not have the cholera-induced diarrhea. He was actually able to isolate the yeast that was used in fermenting and creating that tea, hence discovering Saccharomyces boulardii by Henry Boulard. Now that we've been studying uh, for nearly a decade, or a century rather, the impacts of Saccharomyces, we are discovering, like this study that we'll come to in a moment found, antibacterial effects, hence anti-SIBO, but also antiparasitic, antiprotozoal, antifungal, anti-carcinogenic, and also pro-antioxidant, and even immunomodulatory function, which would make sense if this fungus can improve SIBO, and SIBO ties in with immune function, then immunomodulation would be a natural effect that we would expect to see from utilization of Saccharomyces boulardii or boulardii probiotic. But as you're also likely used to me saying, we should be careful not to just look at mechanism and say, oh, well, if, if this happens, then you know, that outcome should be present. We got to look at the interventional clinical trials to make sure that the mechanism induced by a therapy will translate to a sizable and appreciable impact in human interventional outcome trials. So hence, and enter the study I wanted to share with you today. Now, this study was entitled Impact of Saccharomyces boulardii CNC 
M1754 on bacterial overgrowth and composition of intestinal microbiota in diarrheal IBS patients results of a randomized pilot study. And they found improvements in SIBO, improvements in IBS, improvements in abdominal pain and diarrhea. Again, likely due to the fact that Saccharomyces is antibacterial. And if we can modulate that overgrowth, that can help with leakage. And so this is where we see a number of positive impacts from this intervention. Here's a graph I want to share with you. The SIBO incidence, this is only after two weeks. This is fairly remarkable in terms of a very short time to response. Now, I've said before that when looking at the body of probiotic interventional data on the whole, you see fairly consistently that peak improvements are hit between the second and third month administration. But I have also said you should see some sort of symptomatic improvement by weeks one, two, or three, usually at least by the end of a month, you should be observing some benefit from using a probiotic. That's exactly what you're seeing here. After two weeks, you're seeing the diet alone group, which was a low FODMAP diet, which is very effective for IBS. Uh, and we're seeing here actually led to a 30% improvement in SIBO. Then you're looking at that next to the low FODMAP diet plus Saccharomyces boulardii. And there's a 10% higher level of SIBO clearance. Not only that, but SIBO gas levels in the diet alone group, as compared to the diet with the probiotic, were remarkably different. So just some great data helping us to see the impact that Saccharomyces can have. Now, I also wanted to break this down into a protocol for you. So here is what they did in the study. And this is nothing exotic, new, or novel. This is pretty standard dosing for Saccharomyces boulardii. I make this aside because you want to be careful if people are representing that they have the, the secret knowledge or the secret protocol. Uh, there, there's an old saying I initially got from Paul Check, which was, the closer you get to truth, the more commonalities you find. And this is akin to we should be seeing similar dosing protocols across multiple studies. And hence here, very simple, straightforward, 10 billion CFU per day. That's usually going to be about two capsules. Depends a little bit on the serving size of the formula that you're using, but most formulas, it's about two capsules per day of Saccharomyces boulardii. So it's nothing very high. It's just a standard, simple Saccharomyces protocol. And again, their duration was only two weeks. Now, just to reiterate, if you look at most of the trials, peak benefit seems to occur at the two to three month mark. So we could say from this study, your first checkpoint could be two weeks. If it's improving, if you're feeling better, keep going. And if you're not, then you may want to consider a different type of probiotic. One other thing I want to comment on, more of an aside, more of my speculation, although there is a little bit of data documenting this. Just because Saccharomyces helps reduce diarrhea does not mean it will cause constipation. This would be a mistake because it's looking at probiotics like drugs. Drugs tend to have a unidirectional specific mechanism of action. They lower this, they increase that. Because probiotics, as we covered, and specifically Saccharomyces, can be antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, can improve antioxidant status. You can see improvements in the gut. And then as you see those improvements in the gut, you can have a spillover impact onto different symptoms. So as you modulate the microbiota and reduce inflammation, you may see those who are constipated become more regular or those who have diarrhea become less diarrheal. So just to bear that in mind, I think the best way to use probiotics is to personalize them to the individual system. There's essentially three different types. We've discussed this many times in the past. I'll just put it out here now. Saccharomyces, like we just discussed. Alternatively, blends of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. And alternative to those two would be a bacillus or a soil-based probiotic. Try a formula. 
give yourself about a month. You should see improvements by a month, if not less. If you are improving, continue through to two or three months and then reevaluate. If you start on a probiotic and you have turbulence or negative symptoms that last more than a few days, maybe up to a week max, then that tells you the probiotic's not the right one for your system. So trial one of the other types. I would always check this with your doctor or with your healthcare provider, but just a few tips in terms of as we've been honing in our approach at the clinic, what we found to be helpful. Anyways, there is a long short on this very interesting study. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe. It helps us get practical science-based information out to more people, which we are desperately trying to do. Thank you.